All right, here we are with six studies in front of us. And we have this question of how do fats, specifically saturated and unsaturated fats, affect insulin sensitivity? The previous videos discussed a bit on the direct implications of these fats on the health of the pancreas through two separate studies. But we have to ask ourselves, how much does this actually translate to humans? And two of these studies are short-term, meaning immediate measurements taken after people have been exposed to various fats to measure short-term effects. Let's begin with the latter, the two short-term studies, and then we'll take a look at the long-term effects. The short-term studies were performed somewhat similarly. Uh, they recruited people to come into a lab and either fed them a high saturated fat drink, a high unsaturated fat drink, or water. And then they measured their insulin sensitivity over time. One study fed the participants the drink once and then measured over several hours. But another study had people stay over 24 hours and had them continue to consume each drink every hour or two. If you want more details on the study designs, I have detailed analyses of all and they're freely available to you. But for the sake of brevity and keeping people engaged, there's a general overview of the study designs. In the first study, the one that only fed one drink with high concentrations of each respective fat, high saturated fat, palmitate specifically, or high monounsaturated fat, oleate specifically, there was a reduced ability of these individuals to remove blood sugar per unit of insulin in the saturated fat fed individuals. The vertical axis shows the amount of glucose disposal or removal of glucose from the blood per unit of insulin. So the higher it is, the better the insulin sensitivity. The gray bar is the water only condition and the blue bar is the unsaturated fat condition. And the red bar is the saturated fat condition. So the individual dots are the individual results of all the people measured. So you can see the spread of the data. Statistically speaking, taking everyone into consideration, the saturated fat fed condition was the only one that experienced reduced blood sugar, glucose clearance. What's cool about this study is that they also looked at several insulin signaling molecules within the cells of the body to determine where there might be some deficiencies. As much as I'd love to get into all the molecular detail, I'll have to save that for other content. Otherwise the video will end up well, being like over an hour long. But does the other study agree with these results? Well, keep in mind that for this study, people were exposed to each fat condition far longer than the first study. Plus on top of that, they added a condition looking at polyunsaturated fats. So here's what they found. On the horizontal axis, we have increasing insulin concentrations as well as each condition. So control that didn't consume any fats, MUFA that consumed continuous monounsaturated fat drink, and SFA that consumed a continuous saturated fat drink and PUFA that consumed a continuous arsenic poison drink. Just kidding, a polyunsaturated fat drink. Finally, on the vertical axis, there's the measure of glucose infusion, which is a proxy measure of sugar clearance from the blood. We're looking at the relationship between sugar clearance and insulin levels. As you can see, the control monounsaturated fat and polyunsaturated fat conditions led to a linear relationship, meaning that if you increase insulin concentrations, you see a greater disposal of sugar from the blood. This is consistent with being more insulin sensitive. However, the saturated fat condition shows that at higher insulin levels, you get less sugar clearance, essentially less bang for your buck, so a worse deal. Both of these studies show congruent results, indicating that unsaturated fats at least maintain insulin sensitivity, but saturated fat exposure reduces insulin sensitivity. Yet short-term results don't necessarily translate to long-term effects. So let's touch on four other studies. Of these four studies, they were all much longer than the ones that we just covered, but the results aren't in agreement. Three studies show worse insulin sensitivity, otherwise stated an increase in insulin resistance, yet one study disagrees, showing no negative effects of saturated fat. To throw in another wrench, I would even have to disqualify one of these studies for how it was performed, and it isn't the one that showed no negative effects. So how do we make sense of it all? 
How do we reconcile the inconsistencies across these studies? Can we get a more definitive answer? For that, my friend, let's clear the air in the next video. I'll speak to you there.